We are the waiting ones, longing for the day to come when we are no longer waiting on the one who can save us from ourselves, waiting with bated breath for hope to reach out its hand from heaven and heal our helpless hearts, waiting for a light to spark, a light to dawn, a light to diffuse the dark we drawn like curtains over our souls, waiting for the promise to unfold like a map leading us to the treasure of treasures so we can behold and believe, waiting for peace to supersede our anxieties and flow like a river through a dry and weary land where there is no water, waiting for the Father to see fit to find us in our pit, pining in our sin, the spiritual slum we lived in. But when the fullness of time had come, he sent forth his only Son, incarnate one, the manifestation of God in the flesh, the epitome of a promise kept. He left heaven's majesty so we no longer have to be waiting. The birth of a baby a king come to redeem the world he created god born in a borrowed stable the light of man in a makeshift cradle this is not a fable the one who we have waited for is here peer into the manger and behold him who welcomes the stranger and breaks the chains of every captive our maker our savior our master is here casting our fear into the ocean of his love emmanuel god with us go shout it on the mountain because our waiting is done Christmas. Christmas. Welcome. Welcome to this service to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Let us stand and sing together. Hark the herald, angels sing. seated. Let us join together in prayer. 
Beloved in Christ, this Christmas Eve, it is our duty and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and to go in heart and mind to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us hear again from Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our sin until the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this house of prayer glad with our carols of praise. But first, because this is of things which would rejoice Jesus' heart, let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and all his people. For peace upon the earth he came to save. For love and unity within the one church he did build. For goodwill among all people. And particularly at this time, let us remember the poor, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember all those who rejoice with us but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitudes which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this, Lord Jesus, we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer to the throne of heaven in the words that Christ himself taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Almighty God, bless us with divine grace. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life, and unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen. Amen.
Good evening and Merry Christmas. I'm reading from Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 through 15 and 17 through 19. God announces in the Garden of Eden Adam and Eve's punishment for the rebellion and that the seed of the woman shall bruise the serpent's head. They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and the, his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who gave me to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, Oh, the serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you. You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of, of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it... You were taken, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. If you all will stand, let's sing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. <laughs> Genesis 22, 15 through 18. God promises to Abraham that by his descendants, all the nations of the earth shall obtain blessing. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withhold your son, your only son, 
I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. This is hymn number 211, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 1, 2, 4, and 7. This is the third lesson from Isaiah 9, 2, and verses 6 and 7. Uh, the prophet announces the birth of a king to a people in, the, in darkness. Isaiah 9, 2, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son has been a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Please join me in Low Era, How It Rose Air Blooming. It's number 216 in your hymnal if you have one, or the words would be on the screen. We're going to do verses 1 and 2.
Next reading is from Micah chapter 5, verses 2 to 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrath, uh, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when he who is in labor hath brought forth, then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Next hymn is O Little Town of Bethlehem. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4. The angel Gabriel announces to the Virgin Mary that she will give birth to God's promised son whose kingdom shall never end. I'll be reading verse, uh, Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 35 and then verse 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is hymn number 219, What Child Is This? If you brought your offering tonight, there is a box at the back we call the Joy Box. You're welcome to drop it in there as you leave or make your contributions online or mail them into the office, whatever you prefer. But thank you for your generosity and your giving. Now the quartet has a special anthem for you. Let it be um for 
sing the doxology to the tune of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. to come down and join me here on the steps over on this side. Come on down. Come on. Don't be shy. Have a seat right, right here. Right here so we can see you and you can see the book. Okay? I've got a special story for you today. Tonight it's called the first Christmas night, and it goes like this. Are you ready? Twas the very first Christmas, and all through the town, not a creature was stirring. There was not a sound. The moon shining bright in the heavens so high gave the luster of midday to the Bethlehem sky. Cool pictures, huh? The animals were nestled in warm, cozy places with looks of contentment on each of their faces. How does a content cow look? It's a good question. Not sure. And Mary and Joseph, so tired from the road, had just settled in to a humble abode. To a Bethlehem stable they had traveled with care, they knew that their baby soon would be there. And then in the stable, a baby's first cry. Peace on earth, goodwill, redemption is nigh. Nigh means near. Redemption is near. But nigh sounds much better. He had not a crib, but in a manger instead, the tiny new baby lay down his sweet head. Mary looked down at his cute little nose and silently counted ten fingers, ten toes. As shepherds kept watch on a small nearby hill, their sheep were all silent and sleepy and still. When suddenly in the sky there arose such a sight, one angel, then many, appeared in the night. The heavens rejoiced, at their, as their story unfurled, a baby, a savior, had been born to the world. So the shepherds arose to search for the place to get a close look at the baby's sweet face. Then out of the east there came royalty, whose mission was finding the Savior, you see. When they finally found the babe they had sought, gold, frankincense, and myrrh were the gifts that they brought. So the wise men bowed down and praised his sweet name. 
Soon all those who heard would rejoice that he came. And now that we know, and now we know, and now that, and now we that know can say with delight. What are we going to say with delight? Jesus was born on the first Christmas night. All right. That's the story for tonight. Thank you for coming down. Now you can go back to your seats and rejoin your family. Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was while Corin Corinius was governor of Syria. All went all went to their own, own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to to Galilee to Judea to Judah, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, who, whom he was engaged in, who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them to stay in an inn. Our next hymn is Away in the Manger. It's number 217 in the hymnal or on the screens. Through 20. The shepherds go to see the Savior of the world lying in a manger. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing to you good news of great joy for all people. 
To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known that <clears throat> what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Our next hymn is Angels We Have Heard on High. Jeff, and this is Lesson 8, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. This is go up. In the time of King Herod, Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at, at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and, and all Jerusalem with him. 
And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my, pe my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What's homage? Our next hymn is number 254, We Three Kings.
John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. This is John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. sing O Holy Night together. If you all will stand and just think about what this night is about.
while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son, and she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Where does the creator of the universe send his son? Where does the Prince of Peace make his entrance? A barn, a stable, a, a manger of all places. Certainly no place fit for a king. But then again, this was no ordinary king. The Savior is born in a stable. So there are animals and uh, animal stuff, manure, mud, a pitiful place for a human, much less the king of kings. So why? Why would he do that? Because the shepherd was coming to care for his sheep, to make a way for his sheep. And, and that's what shepherds do. They live where the sheep are. They eat where they eat, and they sleep where they sleep. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. You ever thought about that sign? Sign for what? Maybe it is a sign that Jesus is accessible to everyone. Maybe it's a sign that the God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills can relate to a homeless person, that God will have nothing to do with the social status of mankind. Either way, it's a sign for all of us to go and do likewise. You see, later, Paul would write these words that you should have the same attitude as Jesus Christ, who being in the nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he humbled himself. He made himself nothing, becoming a servant, coming in human likeness. The creator who had been served since before the dawn of time, stepped out of heaven to become a servant. Who does that? The God who's laid in a manger. A messy feeding trough. Yeah. Why such a messy place? Because he came to save messy people. So, that first Christmas was dirty, grimy, filthy. <laughs> it was messy. Thank God it was, because without it, what a mess we'd be in. Amen. That video reminds us in a fresh way that what happened on that first Christmas when Jesus was born looks a lot more like that messy barn than the clean little manger in our nativity scenes that sit on our homes, in our homes and offices and on our communion table here at the fount. Jesus did come to get messy. And the birth that took place in that messy barn on the outskirts of Bethlehem was anything but a clean and sanitary site. As beautiful as a new birth is, a bit of messiness goes with eventually seeing and holding that precious new baby. I had the privilege of being in the birthing room when Nathan was born, and I can testify that the miracle of childbirth comes with sights, sounds, smells, and different sensations that can be described at times as a bit messy. After growing in a womb for nine months, there is a cleanup process that always takes place when a baby makes their arrival on delivery day. But no matter how sanitized and scrubbed everyone in the room may be, before it's all said and done, 
there will be a beautiful mess that accompanies that bouncing baby boy or girl. Do you know who got involved in the middle of the birth mess when Jesus was born? Not only Joseph, who helped Mary through the beautiful mess of the birth, but also the shepherds shortly after the baby Jesus arrived. In one word, if one word was used to describe shepherds in the first century, it would undoubtedly be messy. The shepherds were the roughnecks and the wrong kind of crowd who were anything but sanitized and saintly. Shepherds were messy people with messy lives. Regardless, the angels invited them to come close to the birthplace of the stable where the long-awaited Messiah was finally born. If the messy shepherds were invited in to see the newborn King Jesus, then a precedent was set for all who may have some mess in their own lives. Such a precedent means we have a shot at also being close and drawing near to Jesus as we open our lives to the wonder of Christmas this year. Our imperfect and sometimes messy lives do not disqualify us as people who can encounter Jesus, the Messiah. He is the one who came to get messy, and he invites us to draw near to him this Christmas. The writer of Hebrews says it like this, Hebrews 4, verses 14 through 16. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This passage is talking about the big mess we were in with God due to the sin in our lives that had so entangled us and messed everything up. However, God loved us so much that even while we were in the biggest sin mess we could ever create for ourselves, Jesus came from heaven to earth and was born so that ultimately he could one day die in our place on the cross. This ultimate act of love took care of the sin mess that was running rampant in our lives and through the world. He made a way back to wholeness and single-handedly cleaned up our mess once and for all. Eugene Peterson says it like this, when we sin and mess up our lives, we find that God doesn't go off and leave us. He enters into our trouble and saves us. This is part of the wonder of Christmas that started at the birth in Bethlehem and culminated on the cross at Calvary. Jesus loved us so much that he chose to come close in the middle of our mess. Mike Iaconelli, in his book, Messy Spirituality, takes, talks at length about Jesus' desire to get close to messy people just like you and me. Jesus actually came to meet us in the middle of our mess. Iaconelli writes, Jesus wants people just like you and me to get close to him. Jesus loves people just like you who live in a city, have a wife or a husband, three kids, two cats, and a washing machine that has stopped working. Jesus loves people who are single, work 60 to 70 hours a week, and have parents who wonder why we're not married, and have friends who make much more money than we do. Jesus loves people who are divorced, still trying to heal from the scars of rejection, trying to cope with the single parenting of children who don't understand why this happened to them. Jesus wants all of us who do not necessarily live life in a monastery, who don't have it all together, and probably never will, to feel welcome in his presence. He welcomes you in the midst of your messy life. It is part of the wonder of Christmas to realize that Jesus is not afraid of our messy spirituality. What is true about many of our lives is that messy spirituality is an accurate description of the Christianity most of us live 
and few of us admit. However, it is such a relief when, it, when we realize the truth that Jesus is not repelled by our lives, no matter what kind of mess they may be in, or how inadequate we may feel this Christmas. No amount of mess can discourage Jesus from loving us fully in our humanity. He came to get messy because he knew that is where we were in our lives, right in the middle of a mess of sin. Regardless, he doggedly pursues us in the face of it all with love bigger than whatever mess we find ourselves in today. The king, David, talks about God pursuing us no matter how much mess we may be living in and experiencing in our messed up lives. In Psalm 23, verse 6, he writes, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. What that verse reminds us about is that no matter how much of a mess our life may be in today, there is still a great wonder to behold this Christmas. The reason is because the God we are celebrating, who was born in a manger as our Savior, is the one who came from heaven to earth to show us the way to new life. He is the God who continues pursuing us in the middle of our mess with his goodness and his mercy. It is what Jesus described about the good shepherd going after the one lost sheep that found itself in a real mess when it got separated from the rest of the flock by wandering off. Jesus asked the question found in Matthew 18, verses 12 and 13, when he says, What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. The good shepherd, Jesus, was talking about pursuing the one sheep that was in a mess because it had wandered off, and he was pursuing that one with goodness and mercy in his heart and his mind. This Christmas, you and I just need to slow down long enough in our wanderings to let his goodness and his mercy catch up with us. If we choose to put our messy lives into his holy hands, we can have confidence based on all that it is written about Jesus in the Bible, that he specializes in dealing with our mess in such a way that he knows how to make something new, beautiful, and clean. Jesus is all about giving people a fresh start in life when they trust him. Perhaps this Christmas, you just need a fresh start with Jesus. Maybe you need to go back where it began in the Christmas story and remember that innocence in the form of a baby stepped into a mess to save us from the mess of our lives in this world. If you've missed it earlier, read that part about the messy shepherds being invited into that messy little manger to worship divinity in human flesh once more. Luke 2, 16 through 19 reminds us of this truth concerning the shepherds. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told about them, about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Did you catch that last part? Mary treasured up all these words and pondered them in her heart. What must have been going through her mind? What was she pondering? Perhaps it was just a blur of how that was not how she thought her first hours of motherhood would play out. What a mess. What an unbelievable, unique, and holy mess. What a delivery. What a special delivery. Mary delivered the Savior of the world, who would in turn deliver us from our sins in time. Jesus would res rescue us from the mess we made of things and the mess we made of our lives. And by the way, to answer the question of that popular Christmas song, Mary knew. She knew, all right. 
Mary had a special delivery of the Son of God who would grow up to make way for a special delivery from the sin of the world that separates people from God and the eternal mess all of humanity has headed toward before he arrived. She knew. She knew. That's what she pondered. In time, Jesus would grow into a mature man and teach his disciples how to pray. At the end of that prayer that has come to be known as the Lord's Prayer, Jesus prays, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus is helping us to know how to pray when trying to navigate the mess around our lives. Deliver us from our mess, Lord Jesus. That is what the special delivery of the Messiah in the manger would lead to in time. Yes, the wonder of Christmas is about the special delivery that would one day lead to our special delivery when Jesus would grow up from the baby born in Bethlehem into a man who lived a perfect life and went all the way from the manger to the cross to deliver us from the mess of our sin. All who admit the mess that their sin has caused and who believe in this special delivery of the Savior named Jesus and who call on his name as the one who is our deliverer can have a fresh start this Christmas with Jesus. Jesus is the Savior who meets us in our mess because that is the reason he was born. He came to get messy. If you need to experience the wonder of Christmas, today is the perfect time to ask Jesus to meet you in your mess and to help give you a clean heart and a fresh start. Merry Christmas. Let us pray. Eternal God, by the birth of Jesus Christ, you gave yourself to the world. Grant that being born in our hearts, he may save us from all our sins and restore within us the image and likeness of our creator, to whom be everlasting praise and glory, world without end. Amen. Now we're going to move to candle lighting. If you did not pick up a candle as you came in, um, the ushers will come around with them and hand them out. We're going to stand and make a circle in the whole sanctuary and uh, take your candle. You don't need your hymnal or anything like that. Uh, the words for Silent Night will appear on the screens. So grab a candle and come make a circle. And Alan, once we get started, kill all the lights in the house. As the flame is uh, passed from candle to candle, always dip the unlit candle into the lit candle, not the other way around, so that we don't have wax all over our clothes and floors and everything. Uh, and uh, just be careful. Uh, attend to your children if you have kids near you. All right? Oh. 
Thank you for coming tonight. May the memories of this experience carry you through the holidays and into the new year. May you be blessed as you move forward. We have special treats out in the gazebo and a surprise as you leave the sanctuary today. You may put your candles after you blow them out in the receptacle in the narthex and, uh, and we'll invite you to stay as long as you want. So Merry Christmas everyone. Yeah.